Joining us on the show right now, the chairman of the Buckeye Firearms Association, Mr. Jim Irvine. Jim, good evening, sir. Tim, good evening, sir. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Glad you could join us tonight. Uh, we've been paying a lot of attention to what's going on uh, in Ohio with the uh, right to carry reform bill that includes restaurant carry. What's, what's the latest on this, Jim? Well, we've got a bill that has passed the House and a bill that has passed the Senate, but there are different bill numbers. The one, each of them, they start in their respective houses. So there's some confusion that since it's passed both houses, it's law. It is absolutely not. Uh, still cannot carry there. We need one of those bills has to go through the rest of the process in the opposite chamber. And right now, it's work, they're working out the deals and leadership as far as who's, which individual's bill is going to be the vehicle that makes it to the governor's desk and becomes law. So I spoke with uh, NRA state liaison John Hohenwater earlier this afternoon, and uh, we were in agreement that it's going to get worked out. It's going to get worked out, we think, fairly quickly, and that uh, this is going to move through and become law. So just asking people to stay tuned and pay attention, and uh, we'll let them know as soon as we get a, a decision from leadership as far as which way this is going to go and uh, which bill will be the vehicle. And hopefully we can move that through quickly as soon as that decision is made and uh, get that to Governor Kasich's desk for a signature. Okay. Now, there was a uh, piece in the uh, Cleveland Plain Dealer today that, Jim, I mean, this is, this is crazy. Some of the, uh, the opposition to this bill, uh, the rhetoric is just so over the top. The, the rhetoric is – and if you looked at it online, you didn't see the bold – headline that is above the fold front page of the sunday plane dealer says weapons bill one of the broadest in nation <laughs> now i don't know what they mean by one of the broadest because lots of states allow the license holder to consume alcohol ohio mm -hmm. it's zero most states if you violate their consumption it's a minor infraction ohio it's a felony in uh in a lot of states they don't allow the public places to post no gun signs, you, know, you don't have a right to say, you know what, your driver's license is no good over here. Yeah. And, uh, and yet Ohio is letting the, uh, any of the stadiums, yeah, the concerns on the Brown Stadium or the Cavaliers Stadium, well, you know what, they're posted no guns now. They leave the, program, the stickers up. It doesn't, nothing changes for them. <laughs> so it's, it's, I've joked with people, the Ohio Restaurant Association is opposed to this and is making it worse for other businesses. And I said, you know, really, do you guys lobby that you want the government to control all of this? Because all we're doing is giving each business the authority to run it, security, safety, gun policy, however they decide, instead of the state mandating a law what they can and can't do. Mm -hmm. Are you guys normally for, you know, you're taking control away from your businesses and have the state regulate everything? And, uh, and they haven't gotten back to me on that one. I, I don't really expect an answer. <laughs> but it, it's an interesting position for them to take. And all, all of the opposition, it is, it, it's painfully embarrassing to someone who has logic and looks at it, at the opposition that's coming up on this. Law enforcement, we're right back to, you know, this is an endangerment of society and people are going to shoot each other in bars just like we we're going to shoot each other in parking places when we could carry the guns in the cars. It's just, it is absolute nonsense. But the, uh, the editorial boards across the state are just in an uproar over this idea. Never mind every state bordering Ohio already has it and the far yeah. more lenient law. And uh, it's something, it's another thing John Hohenwater and I talked about is a, uh, a possible response on some of these editor, editors and editorial boards and newspapers on just the complete lies that they're putting in their papers. Uh, trying to, and it's, and it, you know what, they know what, they're doing it because it's worked. They convinced a bunch of, some, not a bunch, but several pro gun legislators mm -hmm. to vote against this bill. And they know this isn't done yet, and they're trying to catch a few more to kill the bill. That's what they're trying to do. So people need to be educated and informed on this and, uh, and make sure their elected official is also. All right, so the most common argument that you're hearing right now, Jim, is, well, if people are going to go into a restaurant where alcohol is served, and oh, it's going to be you know, horrible, horrific. As I understand it right now, off-duty officers can go in, they can carry, they can actually drink while they're there. Uh, that's my understanding, yes. Okay. Um, now, you know, we haven't seen uh, any problems with uh, off-duty law enforcement, uh, and they, they can actually consume a beer. Law-abiding uh, right to carry holders, when they go into a restaurant where alcohol is served, they can't. So, I, again, I mean, this seems like such a weird argument to me. And then their, their response is, well, how will we know? Well, how do you know now? Exactly. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get that. How do you know now? And, again, yeah. there haven't been any problems. Why? Because law-abiding gun owners are law-abiding. It's really simple. It, it is. It's that's. It's. It, it is that simple, and it's. It's. 
it's comical and embarrassing for him. And on the, um, it's, it, it, that's it. You you explained it already exactly. <laughs> well, thanks very much for coming on the program, Jim. <laughs> now, I I mean seriously though, this is this is something that that you should be able to refute this argument in thirty seconds, and yet, as you say, these editorial boards don't want to consider this. They don't want to look at this from a rational viewpoint. They want to scare the bejeebers out of their audience, out of their readers. That's it. It's all it's the fear tactic and emotion. If you can get someone to to be afraid of something and buy into that emotion, you can sell this bag of lies. Yeah. But if you've got somebody who's going to think about things and who understands just some basic common sense stuff, it shouldn't work. So, and that's why it's so painful that we lost some legislators. You expect your legislators to be able to look at facts and make decisions based on that, not on this emotional rhetoric. Yeah. So one thing I want to, on the train, on the uh, police carrying, we have asked them, and their response is always, well, training, 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 law enforcement and training. And we have checked, and because they can consume while carrying, said, how much training do you guys do while, while or after consuming alcohol? Since that's <laughs> what we're discussing here. And the answer is none. So for the topic, for the on-topic training, yeah. they've got zero training in making these decisions while under the influence. Um, and I don't think it's really needed or necessary, but I find it funny that their whole excuse is training. And then you take, there's a whole lot of citizens, you know, take any of these spokespeople, I, I will uh, bet you dollars to donuts that I have had more training in the last year than they have. I'll bet you I've had more training in my lifetime yeah. than they have. Any way you want to, whatever unit they want to measure it on. So should they say I should be able to have more privileges than they do as a law enforcement officer? No, because they've had different training that applies to their job and what they're doing. My training is to me as a citizen what I can do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a completely nonsensible thing once you really dive into it and analyze the statements and look at the facts on it. It's just it, – and the other thing I think law enforcement sometimes forgets, our country is by the people for the people. We have the right to curtail law enforcement powers whenever we want. They don't have rights. They have powers that we give them. There's nothing that gives law enforcement the authority to dictate what our rights are. Our rights are our rights. It's up to us to dictate their powers. Yeah. They've got the, the shoe on the wrong foot on how things go here. Well, you know, and, and, and two, I think it should be pointed out that um, the, the opposition to this, uh, particularly from the, the gun control groups, I mean, they are using this, again, as, a, as a, an attack on right to carry in general. Uh, Sam Hoover, I don't know any relation to Toby Hoover from the I, uh, Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. I Ohio. wondered, but I, I don't think so, but I don't know, because uh, that's a new name to me. All right, Sam Hoover, a staff attorney for the Legal Community Against Violence, um, said, uh, quote, Indeed, allowing the open or concealed carrying of guns wherever makes the public less safe. So for them, Jim, this is about right to carry in general it's not just a, that they're opposed to an expansion of right to carry it's not just they're expo- you know they're they're opposed to uh, reform of ohio's uh, uh concealed carry laws they are opposed to us carrying firearms that's that's it in a nutshell and it's you know and their their statement is absolutely false we know that we've got 20 30 years worth of data with concealed carry from uh florida through every state that's passed it since them and we know exactly what happens. And, you know, the bottom line is they have a policy. They're against people being able to defend themselves from a criminal. That's what their policy is. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, they can't define, defend that statement, so they twist it into something else. And the whole thing is they're not really – I don't know if they're really opposed to that. They just are so afraid of guns or so against guns and those of us who own them that they'll do whatever they have to do to push their agenda anti-gun, even if it means – some woman's not able to defend herself from a serial rapist. Absolutely. Well, uh, Jim, again, I, I'm glad you could come on the show tonight uh, to talk about the latest here. And uh, gun owners just need to be, uh, you know, going to BuckeyeFirearms.org and uh, NRAILA.org. And that's that's right. Sign up for those alerts because I guarantee you, both NRA and Buckeye will be sending them out. Hopefully soon, as we get something uh, something positive, saying, "Hey, here's where we are. Here's where we're going. Here's where we what we need you to do." And uh, but that's the two uh, two key emails everybody needs to be signed up for. All right, hey Jim, thank you so much, sir, and I look forward to doing this again soon. Yeah, hope to uh, uh, hopefully next uh, in the next week or two we can come on and say uh, where we're going and what's going on and uh, have positive news coming out of Ohio. I hope so. Thanks, Jim. Have a great night. Good night. Jim Irvine, chairman of the uh, Buckeye Farms Association, again, uh, org, And 
Uh, Ohioans for concealed carry as well at ohioccw.org.